Hi everyone, it's that time of year where I look back on all the crafting mistakes that I made last year and all the things I learned and then pop them into one video for you so you can pick up all these tips and tricks at the same time. So I'm now going to go over my top 10 crafting hacks that I learned in 2023. Hopefully some of these will help you. Let me know in the comments which one is your favourite. Now we're going to be covering all sorts of things from die cutting, stamping, embossing, adhesives, foiling, you name it, we're probably covering it within these 10. As always, don't forget, of course, to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Now, the first one is something that I kind of came across by accident earlier last year. And when I showed it in a reel or a short, it went crazy. I didn't realise that so many people needed this in their lives. So it's all about your hot glue gun. Now, how many people are scared of using a hot glue gun? Because, of course, you can burn your fingers. You know, it can leave the glue strings. It's not always perfect. So what I tend to do is take my hot glue gun, heat it up, get myself a silicon mat, and I just pop myself some glue drops on my mat. So I do this about once a month and I just get myself maybe 20 or 30 glue drops. It takes me just a few minutes and then I pop them aside to dry. Once the glue drops have cooled down, you can just pop them off the silicon mat and store them away. Now I tend to come to these when I need just the tiniest little drop of glue. I don't need to worry about waiting for my glue gun to heat up plus it's a lot safer and a lot easier all you need to do is take the appropriate size glue dot because of course you can make these small and large pop it where you'd like to use a glue drop so this is usually for my heavier and uh, different material embellishments like this wooden star and rather than using my wet gl hot glue and putting the star directly in it while it's still warm and rushing i can be careful to position that exactly where i want it and then gently just warm it with my heat gun, which of course is instant heat. So that takes about 10 seconds to just remelt that hot glue. And as soon as that's gone transparent, I can put my embellishment into it. Now I have got absolutely no glue strings and that is instantly adhered. When I did a tutorial showing you all this next crafting hack, I was blown away with the comments. So thank you all for watching that and you can still watch the full tutorial. I'll link them all down below. But this is about foiling with your die cuts without a foiling machine. So I've got some hunky dory holographic mirror card here. I've die cut one of my favorite dies here, the alphabet brush strokes die. And I'm going to just place it onto some black cardstock. Now you may say, well, that's already given you the kind of foiled look, but it hasn't because the die cut is still raised up so if you take a look at this really closely you've still got dimension in there it doesn't quite look like it's foiled it obviously doesn't look as if that foiling is embedded into our cardstock once you've adhered your mirror card or mirror paper, I like to use the lightest weight I can find, to your cardstock, you want to find yourself some rubber mats. Now, many die cutting machines will come with these and we often just put them aside, don't use them as often as we should. I've got a variety of different thicknesses here so I can work out which one I need. So I'm going to take out the thinnest plate from my die cutting sandwich and I'm going to place my cardstock between two rubber mats. Obviously, you may need to experiment with which ones will fit through your machine. Now let's take a look at this close up. So you'll see now the foiling is completely embedded into the cardstock. It's super smooth and you're going to have so much fun with this technique. Check the back of the cardstock and you should see where that mirror card has been embedded in. While we've got our rubber mats to hand, let's go to hack number three. So this is all about embossing with your dies, particularly your nesting dies. Now, all dies you can usually emboss with. If they are the dies where you have to snip elements out of each other, they're not as easy until you've done the snipping. But nesting dies are perfect. Now you can use any shape or size of nesting die and any amount of them that you want. Just lay down a rubber mat in your plates or your sandwich, put your cardstock down, then your nesting dies with the dies facing downwards, and then your plate on top. And you have got subtle texture that you can use in the background of the card or just to subtly frame something on your card. 
So the fourth crafty hack is helping you out when you haven't got quite the right embossing powder. So I found that I needed a deep purple embossing powder and I didn't have it. So I found myself the perfect colour cardstock and I put clear embossing powder in the design that I wanted all over my purple cardstock. So once that's set and cooled, I can now go in with my colour ink that I wanted in the background. In this case, it was going to be black. Because I'm covering a large area, I'm using a really large flat blending brush. Now I'm using a dye-based ink for this so that the pigment doesn't stick to that clear embossing powder. And I'm just going to buff off the colour from the embossing powder, revealing a really bright colour. And it just looks, because they're glossy, as if I've used a purple embossing powder on black cardstock. Craft hack number five is removing panels that you've stuck down using double-sided tape. So sometimes we put something on a card base and we think actually we'd like to mat something underneath that, it's the wrong size or colour card base, or we've just put it on at an angle. So the easiest way is to take your heat tool and just warm up that glue. Now I'm doing this from underneath because I have heat embossing on my panel that I don't want to melt, but if you don't have heat embossing and it is just some pattern paper or plain paper, you can do this from the top and as you see as you start to warm that up the card will lift off with the glue from your card base so my card base is perfectly clean there a bit warm but it's clean and my tack my sticky is still on the back now this is still sticky as well even though it's just been melted now I made this card a few months ago so you don't need to hurry to do this before any glue dries you can actually come back to older cards and remove the panels if you want to now this leads me really nicely into tip number six. So imagine I've just stuck my topper down on my mats and layers onto my card and I realise oh, it's upside down. What on earth do I do? This is such a simple tip for you. If you didn't use double-sided tape so you can't use the heating method to remove this, say you used wet glue and it's too late to lift it up, you know, sometimes we notice these things last minute. Simply measure the length of your card in your scoreboard, score halfway along that length. So this is a seven inch card base, so I'm going to score at three and a half inches. And then fold that down on the score line, burnish it, and you've got yourself an easel card and that is the right way up now. Now you can glue this section to the back of your card if you wish and there's still space for you to write your sentiments. Now, as you all know, I'm a huge fan of Distress Ink and Distress Oxide, but it was only in the last year that I truly understood the difference between the two. So here's a little clip that I've created in another video to explain to you what the difference is between Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. So, Distress Ink is made up of a dye, and the dye is completely saturated within a liquid. When you put it on top of paper, those colour particles in the liquid soak into the paper. Now an oxide is made up of a dye and a pigment. So it has a dye base, which will soak into the paper as well, but it also has pigment particles, pigment particles. Now these are going to not soak into the paper. If you imagine mixing sand and water together, and that's basically how pigment mixes into water. It doesn't actually get into the liquid. It just floats around as particles in there. And it's that pigment of the oxides that sits on top of the paper. It doesn't soak in. So although we have a dye in both inks and oxides, with the oxide we have the additional pigment. This gives it its really vivid colours. It gives us the ability to layer and mix colours as well. And it also gives us more of an opaque look too. Now because the dye in inks actually soaks into the paper, that means that that dries a lot quicker. With pigments, they sit on top of the paper much, much longer. We have time to blend them and mix them together before they dry. Now this has also helped me out in lots of other ways because it also helps me understand other inks. So for example, my Memento ink is a dye ink, so I know now that that's going to soak into the paper and it's going to dry really quickly. And I also know that my Versafine is a pigment ink and because of learning about the Distress Ink and Oxide and about pigments, I know that this is going to sit on top of the paper and it's going to take a little longer to dry. 
craft hack number eight is to save the waste from your dies, particularly if you don't have the blank silhouette die to match an outline one. So I've just die cut this butterfly and I'm going to use this waste here to stencil the colour that I want through. Now, because my cardstock, obviously I can't see through it, I'm going to place a pencil mark directly in the centre where I want my inking to be or my butterfly die cut to go in a moment. Then I've got a central point for my butterfly there and I'm going to use some blending inks. Now you don't have to use blending inks here. You can of course use your colouring pencils, your alcohol pens, whatever it is you prefer to colour with. But we're just using this as a silhouette to brush some ink through. And we have now got the perfect coloured outline for our die cut to sit over the top of. How beautiful is that? Crafty hack number nine is something that I've been doing for years, to be honest. But I just did a video on it in 2023 for Craft Stash, and I didn't realise not many other people do this. So this is all about placing your dies, I suppose, upside down in your machine. So usually we were taught, I think, to die cut with your cutting blades facing downwards. So your die is on top of the paper and run it through your machine. But I used to work with a company that had extremely delicate and intricate dies. And I actually discovered that placing my die the other way round, so the paper is on top of the die in the sandwich, gives us a much better cut. So now lifting this out after running it through upwards, you can see, although it was a particularly intricate die, everything's just falling out absolutely beautifully. Now by using your die this way round, I've personally never had a die that I can't cut through beautifully. Now finally, craft hack number 10. If you've ever had stamping that has resulted in a bit of a blotchy image like this with a brand new stamp and you're thinking, oh, what can I do about this? I can't get a clear impression. My hack is to take a simple pencil eraser and I like to use the large flat ones. It covers a bigger area and I just brush over the surface of the stamp. Now this can happen with absolutely any type of stamp. It's kind of just residue left over from the manufacturing process. So you get this sort of coating on the stamp and you just need to remove that. Some people like to use their fingers to rub it off, some people like to use ink and stamp it a few times first before going to their project but I just find this works every time for me. I'm not wasting any ink and I do have a lot of hand creams and oils on my hands very often so they're just not going to help. So now already I can see that my ink is holding much better on this stamp. Perfect. So there we have my top 10 crafty hacks from 2023. Now, which are your favourite? Let me know in the comments and also let me know if there's any that you actually hadn't seen before. You can find full tutorials for a lot of these tips on my channel. So, of course, don't forget to subscribe. And here's to finding lots more crafty hacks and tips in 2024.